I late to the party on this one. Shadow of the Colossus came out like nine years ago, and I only just played it a few months ago. This game was great. It had awesome visuals, nice controls, a great soundtrack, a cool atmosphere, and some of the best boss battles to grace gaming today. All these Colossi battles were fun and unique, and I'm going to count down my top ten here for you today. So grab your climbing gear and your enchanted sword, and let's get this adventure started. So kicking off the top 10 about the game that is consisting of killing giant monsters, number 10 is actually one of the smallest colossi in the game. Go figure, right? The 11th colossi, Celosia, Guardian of the Flame, is actually one of the most aggressive colossi in the game. Most of them need to be provoked in order for them to attack Wander, but this guy will be like, as soon as Wander gets in his area, he'll be like, Roar! Destroy! at him, and rush at him. Your main method for defeating him is that his armor is plated over top of his sigil on his back, so you gotta knock that off. And the way to do that is you gotta go hang up by the torches in the area, and he'll charge at you from there, and it'll knock that stick loose that you use to light up. And here's the kicker. Celosia, the guardian of fire, is scared of fire. It's hilarious, right? Well, anyway, you use your makeshift torch to back him off a cliff, and that will knock off his armor plating, and then his sigil will be exposed. After that, you jump off the cliff and hopefully land on Celosia's back, and he will, with you on his back, run all around the canyon that you were hanging out in before you entered his little sanctum there, and it is awesome. While this fight is pretty good, it is not without its share of problems. First of all, that canyon jump is pretty hard to make if you're not careful. And the second problem is if you screw up that canyon jump, you're screwed because the frequency of this dude's attacks is ridiculous in comparison to how long it takes Wander to get up. Well, pretty much if you get hit, Wander will get knocked over and you'll pretty much get stuck in a loop of standing up and getting gored again and again and again. It can be kind of frustrating if you're not careful. Wander, get up, Wander. Please, Wander, get up before the giant monster comes to attack you. Please get up, Wander. Please, come on, roll out of the way. Roll out of the way. Ah, darn it! So, continuing the trend of having some of the smaller colossi on this list, number 9 is Kuromori, the 8th Colossus, who is like this kind of armored lizard thing, which is really cool. You fight him in a, like, ruined coliseum type of area, which is nice because the fight lends itself to the setting really well. What you gotta do is, since he's, like, all armored on the top, you gotta go up to the, like, top level of the coliseum and shoot arrows at him to get his attention and he'll like start crawling on the walls trying to get you. What you gotta do then is shoot his hands or feet or whatever they are so that he falls off. He'll fall like backside down and he'll be like a turtle trying to like on a shell trying to like get back up. So when you take your opportunity to jump on his underside and strike because that's where his sigils are. I pretty much like this boss fight because it adds a different layer of strategy besides just climb and stab, which I think is really cool. Alright, so now that we've got the small fry of this list out of the way, it's on to the actual giant monster fights. Hooray! Number 8 on this list is Barba, the Sixth Colossus. The two main things this fight has going for it are setting and boss design. The setting of this area is like this underground extension of the shrine that you hang out in every time you beat a colossus. And I think it looks really cool, and I like the look and feel of the place. And then Barba himself just looks sweet. I love the great look that he has about him there. 
Um, the fight itself is actually relatively simple. All you gotta do is get from one side of the room to the next and jump over a few walls along the way. And then once you do that, just hide in one of the cubby hold areas there and shoot Barba to get his attention and he'll go he'll like lean down and look at you. And that's when you run and jump and grab onto his beard and start climbing. Barba's got two sigils on him, one on the top of his head and then one in the middle of his back. The one in the middle of his back can be kind of tricky to get if you're not careful. <laughs> Funny thing is, when I first played this fight, I thought that like you could run and jump onto his hand from one of the little walls that you're supposed to climb. I was sorely mistaken. Maybe it, maybe it's like a speedrun tactic or something that you can use, but there's no way I can pull it off. So at number 7 we have the 7th Colossus Hydrus, which is like an electric serpentine eel type of monster. This fight is really cool, pretty much. So when Hydrus swims towards you, you just gotta grab onto him, and then once you grab hold of him, he'll pretty much swim and like drag you under the water. And I think it makes for some really cool visual. So just being dragged around underwater and stuff. I thought it was cool. And Hydrus himself, there is like a minor sigil under each electrical fin thing that he's got. And there's a major one at like his head. So as long as you're careful about not being hit by the electricity that's coming from the fins that give out the lightning and stuff, you should be able to hit the minor sigils, no problem. And then be on your merry way to the major sigil. One problem that this fight has would be that when you let go, it's kind of a pain in the face to get a back hold of Hydrus. So that can be annoying sometimes, but all in all, this fight is pretty good. Number 6 is the first Colossus of Valus. I really like this battle because of how well it sets up the rest of the game. It introduces you to the mechanics of the game, sets the tone of the music. It's a relatively simple boss battle, like all you gotta do is stab him in the leg and climb to his head and finish him off, but what this really does well is give you the scope of what you're in for for the rest of the game, how insignificant you are compared to the rest of the Colossi. I mean, this dude's walking around and wanders seriously hidden by the dust cloud that he's leaving in his footsteps. <laughs> Funny little side note here, when I first played the game I kept thinking that you had to do something to his hand after you stabbed him in the back of the leg because the camera like pans over to that and I'm like, huh, looks like they're emphasizing his hand. So I spent like five minutes trying to get that done. But overall, this is probably one of the best first bosses in any video game because of how well it introduces you to everything that the game is about. Good music, good mechanics, the scope of your adventure. All of it's done really well here. Argus is another example of a boss fight that really lends itself to its environment. This dude, obviously, as with the rest of them, is huge. But unlike some of the other big colossi where you can like grab their legs and climb up that way, or they'll bend down somehow for you to grab onto them by their face or their chest or something, you can't do that with this dude because he doesn't bend down because he's wielding this giant knife that he just swings at you. So instead you gotta lower him over to this one area in the ruined city-like place, and he'll like step on this block thing, which will enable you to climb up further in the city ruin area. After that, you gotta get his attention, shoot him a little bit, and he'll swing at you, but thankfully there's ruins in your way, 
and it knocks loose some more stuff for you to climb. After that, you have to make him break one of the bridging areas and then jump on his head. And that's where you can take out his first sigil. Argus has another minor sigil on his arm, and once you stab that, it will cause him to drop his huge knife. After that, just fall off of him, and he'll eventually take a swing at you with his hand. And then you jump on him and stab him in the hand and secure the victory. Remember when I said that Celosia was one of the more aggressive colossi of the bunch? Well, he doesn't have anything on Dirge. Dirge is arguably the most aggressive colossus in the game. And this fight is really quick paced and intense. Actually, if you do it right, it doesn't take you that long to finish, but there's a lot of room for error. So, pretty much, you gotta run away from Dirge because he is really, really fast. Aggro has to be at top speed pretty much the entire fight. And you gotta maneuver around all of that, and when he pe peeks his head up and he stares at you with those freaky eyes, seriously, those eyes are like, they can compete with Majora's Mask on how much they can freak you out. Mm. But after that, you gotta turn around and maneuver Wander so that you can shoot him. And then after that, he'll crash into the wall of the sand pit arena thing that you're fighting in. After that, you can jump on him and attack him. Rinse and repeat a few times. Honestly, when I first played this game, I thought I was going to mess this fight up a lot, because I already knew about this fight and how hard people said it was, and I am not good at aiming the bow from my horse. But actually, I managed to beat him in my first try relatively quickly. I also want to mention that the music for this really helps because it's just a quick paced track that really makes you feel under stress while you're being chased. Alright, so we've reached the end of the game. 15 colossi down, one to go, the only thing standing between Wander and the revival of his girlfriend is just another huge climb, right? So let's be on our merry way, come on aggro, let's go. Yeah, things don't turn out as well as you think they would. Aggro gets unceremoniously um, dumped from the rest of the game and Wander loses his only companion for this fight. It's kind of depressing because Aggro has been there for you. After each Colossi battle, you see Aggro just come striding along and it's depressing. So after the fall of your beloved horse, you continue your climb up until you're at like the top of this mesa-like thing, and you see the camera pan over to the base of this large building. Eh, maybe the last Colossus is in there. Giant building, final battle, seems fitting enough, I guess. Looks big enough to house something. Hmm. Wonder what it will be. Wait a minute. Wait. wait. The, the Colossus isn't in the... It, it is the... Oh, man. Excuse me while I go wallow in the fact that Wander's quest is just gonna have to go end at 15 and his girlfriend's dead forever now. I, there's no way I can do this. Oh boy, malice. I know in the last segment I said that Dirge was the most aggressive Colossus, but the Malice might be in contention for that as well. First of all, upon seeing you, he shoots fireballs at you. The first half of the fight is seriously just getting to him. Like, you gotta work your way through a network of tunnels and stuff leading up to him. If those tunnels weren't there, Wander would have been screwed. Actually, scratch that, because... If you're crazy enough and you have good enough timing, you can, like, dodge roll out of the way. 
but that requires incredibly precise timing and a lot of patience. After you get to Maus, you actually start a rather lengthy climb that really doesn't have much happen except you climb. It doesn't do anything until you get towards like its chest. And the music is very brooding. It's not as uh, energetic and epic. Epic in the way of epic fight music is the other songs in the soundtrack and while you're taking this long climb up the Colossus you start asking yourself some questions like was this worth life my horse? is this really worth going through with? was it right to kill all those creatures? And once you finally get to the like, Malice's chest, you gotta work through a few different sigil hop things and shoot him, I think. Yeah, shoot him a couple times. And once you work your way to his head, it's just don't fall off and you should be fine. Overall, this fight is probably the most emotionally charged in the game when you consider losing your horse and all the other nonsense Wander has been through since the start of his quest keeps getting sicker and sicker looking after each Colossus fight, so the emotions in this fight are running rapid and that's why it puts this fight up so high along with the considerable challenge that it gives you. So at number 2 we have the largest and most docile of the Colossi, Phalanx, the 13th Colossus. A little fun bit of something to note about him being the most docile, one of the songs that plays during the fight is called Counterattack, even though no matter what you do to him, he will not fight back. So not really a difficult boss, but it's still an awesome experience. First thing you gotta do is shoot these little air flotation sack things, and he'll eventually come down to the ground and skate along the sand with his wings. After that, you gotta chase him and jump onto his wings, and then once his wings go parallel with the ground, he'll fly back up into the air and jump on his back. It looks really sweet. I love the way Phalanx looks when you're up in the air, and the way everything looks when you're up in the air, I should say. After you hit like two of the sigils and find back down to the ground and you rinse and repeat. So yeah, this fight isn't very hard, but it's a spectacle. Phalanx looks awesome and the way everything looks when you're in the air is great. It's absolutely huge. And it's one of these it's one of the colossi that when you kill them, you actually kinda of feel bad and question whether what you're doing is right. It's not the first of them to do that, but it is one of them, and maybe the most effective. Alright guys, number one is the epic spectacle that is the fight with the fifth Colossus Avion. Avion is a large bird-like colossus that has a perch in the middle of a lake. To initiate the fight, you have to shoot at him and then he'll come flying towards you and he'll kind of swoop in attack. When he does that, you gotta jump onto him and grab his wing. And that's when the real fun begins, because he'll start flying all over the lake and doing all sorts of loopy loops and twists and turns. And the visuals while you're flying over the lake with him are just amazing. They are absolutely gorgeous. Not to mention the best song in the game, in my opinion, plays the Despair Feel Farewell. Love that song. Avion himself, the fight, is rather simple again. Pretty much all he does to do is shake you off is kind of barrel roll a couple of times. You know turn upside down, as long as you're hanging on, you should be able to do it relatively easily. But, so he has three sigils, one on each wing and then one on his tail. In previous segments, I've 
posed the question a couple of times whether or not Wander's quest in his quest is actually doing the right thing. Now, while Phalanx, you kind of feel it more. Avion is definitely the first Colossus that made me start to question the, the integrity of the task that you're carrying out and whether or not you should really be fighting these creatures. So for being a grand spectacle that I had the most fun with, with great music and sweet visuals and it's just overall a lot of fun to do, Avion takes number one on this top 10 shadow of the Colossus list. I am Reaper Hunter 23, thank you for watching.